Ollie and I love retro tech. In fairness, not quite as much as what John used to. Oh, I absolutely love my bikes and my bike tech. But nonetheless, we have picked out some of our favorite bits of retro tech that you need to know about. Starting with a bike that many regard as the pivotal machine that turned the industry to its material of choice, carbon fiber. First up, we have the Colnago concept in collaboration with Ferrari. So in the 80s, 1986 to be precise, Colnago and Ferrari, Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari teamed up to create a bike. The idea being that Colnago could use Ferrari's expertise in Formula One and their knowledge of carbon fiber to create a lightweight aerodynamic race bike. The result of the collaboration between Ernesto Colnago and his friend, Enzo Ferrari uh, was the Colnago concept. Now this bike was never sold to the public. It was just a concept bike, but it was way ahead of its time um, and had a lot of interesting design ideas on it. I've seen this bike in person yeah. at Colnago Mega Base uh, near Milan. And well, the first thing to point out is that it's got uh, hydraulic rim brakes. Yeah. It's also got gears that are changed via a little gear stick like electronically on the down tube. That's got to be a Ferrari idea, that. <laughs> connected to a really complex gear changing system, which is built into the, the chain set. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's cool because it's all aero and integrated. And then on top of that, you've got tri spoke aero wheels on there as well, and lots of carbon fiber construction. Now, although the gear system was incorporated into the crank, visually the bike appeared to be single speed, but with that internal geared system, the bike was heavy. I mean, oh boy, it was heavy. And as such, the idea never evolved any further than a concept, but to this day, it's still pretty impressive. Proper cool. Next up, we have the first carbon wheels to finish and win Paris-Roubaix. This is a race notorious for destroying bikes and equipment. And people may forget, but in the recent past, they were still using alloy wheels in Paris-Roubaix because carbon wasn't deemed strong enough. Yeah, so the rumor has it that Zip at the time were really keen to get their sponsored teams to use their carbon fiber wheels specifically for Paris-Roubaix because Zip deemed that they felt they were now strong enough. However, in 2006, Zip went to the Arambo Forest, notoriously the toughest section of Paris-Roubaix, with I think it was Team CSC who they sponsored at the time, and they were armed with 10 sets of carbon fiber wheels, which Zip said were gonna be up to the job. However, within 10 minutes, every single wheel was broken. So Zip went back to the drawing board to make their 303s even stronger. So they reinforced them with Kevlar and something called a carbon bridge. Unfortunately, CSC weren't interested at this point, but the Garmin Chipotle team, Chipotle. as they were called back then in 2008, were. Uh, and they rode them in Paris-Roubaix. Magnus Backstead, friend of the channel, one of our commentators on GCN Plus and a former winner of Paris-Roubaix, he rode them on that team, but unfortunately he double punctured and broke his wheels, which wasn't great. But the rest of his team all finished on the wheels, which was seen as a major breakthrough for carbon fiber wheels at Roubaix. But it was 2010 when things really took a turn because Fabian Cancellara was the first rider to then ride to victory using carbon fiber wheels. It was a second of three victories, and in the closing stages of the races, he simply rode away from the competition, claiming that his road bike with carbon fiber wheels was just like riding his time trial bike, whereas everyone else was still using wheels from years ago. The result of Cancellara's victory is that now, no one ever uses shallow box section alloy wheels at Roubaix anymore. Everyone's on carbon, but the cobbles do still claim the occasional carbon wheel. Group sets are next. Now this is a term which most of us will have heard of, and it's the name given to all of the different components fitted onto your bikes. Now we are always banging on about how 105 can be seen as the group set of the people. Now admittedly, ever so slightly less so now that a Shimano 105 group set costs close to 2,000 pound. But the idea remains the same. You've got a middle tier group set using the same kind of technology as the top tier stuff, but at a more affordable price point. But did you know that way before Shimano 105 was a thing, there was Shimano 600. Shimano 600 was basically like the Ultegra of the 70s. 
and it was hugely popular owing to its well, smooth shifting, durability and affordability. Shimano 600 was a second tier group set, so it sat one lower than Dura Ace and it, it used the same kind of technology as Dura Ace but like we're saying at a more affordable price point and it would seem that even in the 1970s trickle down technology was a thing but so good was the Shimano 600 group set many pro riders were using it and many races were won using that group set. Sticking with the subject of gears cast your mind back to the olden days on a journey through time and space when cyclists were still riding single speeds and gears hadn't been invented. Riders were crying out for easier gears when they were going up steep climbs and the derailleur hadn't been invented. But what was invented was something called the dual rod gear. Hardcore enthusiasts will know all about this, but many people will be completely unaware of this. It allowed riders to change gear while cycling along using their bike without the need to stop and remove the rear wheel. Its inventor, Giulio Campagnolo, the man responsible for creating the iconic component manufacturing company, Campagnolo. Clues in the name. Yeah, it kind of was really. So the rod gear had two levers, one for wheel retention, which was essentially a really long quick release lever, and one for guiding the chain onto another sprocket. This system required a special hub and special dropouts to keep the wheel central within the frame as it moved in the dropouts when you were changing gear. I mean, this was a game changer at the time. Yeah. But thank goodness that they then went and developed the derailleur. <laughs> yeah. And finally on our list of retro tech, Alex's favorite wheels of all time, Spinergy's, specifically Spinergy Rev X's. Now these wheels featured bladed spokes. They were made from carbon and they were popular in the 90s and early 2000s. They were ridden by riders such as Mario Cipollini, who, who won several races on them. They featured bladed spokes which radiated out from the hub to the rim. These are incredible. So the eight bladed spokes were designed to slice through the air and definitely not designed to slice off your arms and legs. Or through small animals. I read, um, I read a post on, um, on a Facebook group where it's rumored that they apparently like actually did kill several small animals with spinaches. And that's why they were banned. I'm pleased you said rumoured. So these were incredibly popular with pro cyclists and hardcore enthusiasts alike. However, eventually they were banned by the UCI for not passing some of their strength tests that they'd implemented. And there were even reports of some of the wheels exploding, which is perhaps less than ideal, shall we say. But, but, wait for it. The UCI has no jurisdiction here, <laughs> which is why Alex has bought a set of spinergy wheels and he's been riding them around his local area, which also happens to coincide with a dramatic decrease in the number of squirrels alive in the Westbury area. <laughs> now, now, since the UCI banned the Spinergy RevX design, wheel design and technology moved in other directions. But as Ollie said, I've got my hands on a set, I'm gonna put them in a modern bike to see how this retro wheel stacks up against the modern equivalent and we're gonna make a video all about I'm it. I'm not sure they'll be very aero. Those oh. big thick spokes. Big thick boys. Mm. Well, we'll have to wait and find out. Um, subscri subscribe to GCN Tech if you wanna see that video. It's gonna be coming out in probably a good few weeks. Yeah, well that's mm. our list. Uh, for of retro hot tech here that you need to know about. Let us know what you think of it. Let us know what you would include on this list mm. and what's your favourite out of what we've included. And um, yeah, we, we'll probably include it in a future video. Yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next one. Love you, bye. I'm out of here. Go have a look at my new sh shiny wheels. Spinergy boys. Wee. Kill some rodents. <laughs> no.